top of the evening to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda. This is the time of the week where I get to sit and talk with you for 25 minutes. But I think you're worth it. Now that we have the Power Glove, we've opened up a lot of new places to explore. We can check under these rocks. I'll show you that critter later. I get a little too hasty sometimes. Okay, well, we've already been there, but we'll be making a stop over there again. I didn't quite show you everything. This cave is very handy because you can get... let's see... four... and three and three... So you can get 50 rupees every time you go in, and that's really handy, so you can just keep keep going in and coming out, 50 rupees every shot. So if you're short a few rupees when you need to buy something, that's a good place to go, and it'll always be there, the whole game, from now on. There's another one of those guys. Eventually I will let you see what he looks like before instantly dropping a stone down on top of him. Just be patient. Let's stop in here and have a harsh. Have a heart, please. Hey, have a heart. Little by little, your life's gonna fall apart. Okay. So, if you were to go up to the magic shop and keep going, you would be unable to get much further because there's one of those stones blocking the way. But we can lift those now, and so we'll go explore the area beyond the magic shop. I would recommend that you have, let's say, more than 400 rupees with you when you're coming up. Otherwise, you may want to wait a bit. You may want to use that cave to bring your rupees level, rupee levels up a bit. Although there's another place you can go to get money uh, as a one-time thing that I haven't shown you that I'll get to in a couple episodes. And I'll mention it later today. So stay tuned! That little shield that you start out with, it, it's really quite handy. It's kind of surprising the things that it blocks, but it's, it's pretty small though. You have to be basically right in line with what's coming at you for it to do much for you. So that waterfall is presumably the Waterfall of Wishing that was referred to on the signs back there, but nothing we can do about it now. It's interesting that these enemies seem to drop bombs every time, and there's ways you can actually temporarily influence what the item drops from enemies are, and I'll show you that this episode. But first, get lost. Go the wrong way. Okay, no, seriously. Go down here. Huh? Well, that's a little deer. But yeah, you don't really have much of a choice. You don't need these right away. You can keep going on with the game for a bit before you buy them. But sooner the better. Here, 
Ouch. Thought I could run under that. Just looking over here, not up in there. And here we come to one of my favorite spots in the game. The Waterfall of Wishing. I wish... Alright! Vastly improved, as you can see. Also more powerful, I think. So you don't require that boomerang to finish the game, but it's nice to have. I sure did. Alright, now that would have been nice to have when we went up there a few minutes ago with those uh, little Zoras shooting fireballs at us. And the shield is of the shield upgrade is not necessary to finish the game. Yep. And I may have mentioned this earlier. This is why you don't need to buy medicine of magic. So between having fairies for your health and the medicine of magic for free. You should be alright for like, you know, maybe the first half of the game before you start having to buy, um, starting to having to buy health potions or the, or the cure-all potion. So let's try one of these portals, see where we end up. I'm using like Y or B to swim or something, I'm not sure, just try all the buttons and see what works. It's one of those things I don't really think about, it's just something you just do, I just start hitting the buttons and it goes clunk 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 clunk, doing the swimming. So what you want to do here is you want to throw a hundred rupees into that pond, but while you are um, while you are just throwing rupees in a bit at a time, it's going to say, ah, you're in big trouble today, or you're going to have a little luck, or you're going to have great luck. Those tell you what your item drops are going to be like for the next bunch of enemies that you kill. So it'll rig the odds of getting good item drops in your favor, or it'll uh, rig the odds against you about getting item drops. Could even be that you'll make it so that they don't drop any items at all. So, uh, throw in 20 at a time to speed this up as much as you can. Kind of annoying because you, you forget how far along you are. Let's see, are we almost there? Okay, so you can upgrade your bomb and arrow carrying capacity five at a time. It is a little bit of a pain. But the second round, second and subsequent rounds that you go back, you can now throw 50 at a time. So that makes this a lot faster. I still have that five left over from when I hit five rupees by mistake in the first round. It's kind of annoying. So that's going to stick with me for a while. Yeah, let's make more bombs. I find bombs are at a premium when you're exploring. A lot of arrows you don't really need a whole lot, except if you want to 
use them to beat bosses, or just use them on regular enemies. Which uh, you don't really have to do, but for bombs, you, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you'll be laying bombs everywhere, seeing which way you can go. There's a lot of fake wall cracks, especially going on later in the game. Now, if you need some more money, and you want to upgrade a little bit more, you can go to the southwest of this lake. There's a cave with a crack in, like, there's a crack in the side of a hill. And you can go in and you can defeat some enemies with your bow, bow and arrow, and get some more rupees that way. I'll show you that in a subsequent episode. Here's our very important third magic bottle, so we can get a fairy for that at some time. And I would recommend not spending all of your money. I'd keep, I don't know, uh, 25 rupees is fine because by the time... Uh... Actually, yeah, and actually we're gonna make a pit stop to get a whole whack more rupees. But I would say, um, you know, save save a hundred rupees for the period after the dungeon after next, if that makes any sense. Just keep just keep a hundred rupees in reserve. So that's a long way off. So there's some more little things here that we couldn't have really seen before, but now we can because we have the ability to pick up stones and we have the ability to bash into things. And we can pick up another fairy for our empty bottle. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, if you bash into that statue, you release a bee, but this one doesn't sting you. It's a good bee, and you can capture it and put it in your, put it in an empty bottle if you want. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, the good bee will you let him out, and the good bee will like attack the enemies around you for a limited time. It doesn't last forever, and it and I think the attacks are fairly weak, so I don't I don't use it much. I don't, I don't use it at all, but it's there if you want it. So this is a lesser version of the cave that was over by the desert. You can only get 20 rupees there, as opposed to 50 at the other place. It'd be hard to tell the the actual portals from the from the Zoras just coming up to attack you, but you know the actual portals just stay there, they're persistent. And they're surprisingly useful. I didn't think I would be using them, but I've already used them twice in this episode, and they just happen to take me exactly where I want to be going. It's quite remarkable. So here's something new we can explore now that we have now that we have the ability to lift the stones in front of that gravestone. Now, not dash, but we can give this guy a push, and we fall into a pit. Okay, so now we can do something about those cracked walls we saw ages and ages ago. Bashing into them will do, because it's that big round circular crack instead of just the small crack. That is a nice little pickup. 300 rupees all in one go. It's 
It's kind of fun to revisit an old haunt like this. In fact, I think I'll even pull the old switch again just for just for giggles. See how much better I do this time. Okay, I guess I'm not gonna do a flawless here. I don't even really need to pick that up. But remember what I said about partial... partial hits. Like, what you actually have behind the scenes is a hit points counter. And the hearts are just a representation of that. So you could be at full hearts, but not quite be at full health. Because the, you know, there's several points within a heart, or even within half a heart. So I would just always pick up the hearts. Why not? And this is the most important use for the Power Glove, and what makes it immediately critical to finishing the game is that you have to you have to use it to remove that stone if you want to go up Death Mountain. And the third pendant, as you may have seen in the map, is in a tower on top of Death Mountain. Okay, well let's break into your house. Oh, that's nice. I like it when, you know, they have food for me, you know? Get filled up. And just to check, yeah, there's nothing we can do here yet. So we'll come back to this later. Okay, it's time to climb Death Mountain. I guess we don't have the king's permission, but, you know, the king's dead, so... And we're trying to save his daughter, so... I think he'd approve. Yeah, so that's one of those critters that I was just letting my stone drop on earlier. That's not the way to go. This is the way to go. Sure. Man, that's... That's pretty dangerous. You do, you do not want to be in here without a map. A lamp. Hmm, he says don't get too involved. So there's implicit sanction to get partially involved. Um, do we have to talk here? You might have noticed that there's boulders crashing down on us, and those dumb enemies that turn to stone when you strike them, so... you know, and they get in your way. So this is really not a good, particularly good time. Anyway, but yeah, you do need that mirror, and he does need to give it to you now. Moon Pearl, huh? All right. Yeah, if he if he didn't give you the mirror just then, the you could potentially get stuck. It, the mirror is definitely a required item. So we're just going to use this cave to get us basically up a level, just to just to avoid. Ouch, well, avoid some of the getting bashed by boulders. 
And that there is a one-way path back to the village. You're gonna cut, you would come out on the ledge above where we started the climb. What's that? Looks interesting. Maybe it's like a little pool or something. It's like a fountain for birds, maybe? Anyway, let's do some other checking out first. Alright, another piece of heart. Top of the rock, huh? Alright. Now this room, you can just sort of face down and dash. I'm kind of chicken out though, because sometimes you bounce, like you bounce back at the end and you run into one of those worms. Climbing up again. Ouch. Now one of these days my aim will get better. Well, let's go for a swim. What? Suddenly I'm craving carrots. Here, what's up, Doc? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so that's why we need the moon pearl. So we're gonna get that in the Tower of Hera, but not in this world. Yes, it's the Tower of Hera is in the other world. So how do we get out of this world? Because there's not much we can do here while we're a bunny. Well, we'll use our magic mirror. And this rock is inverted. And one really cool thing about the magic mirror, when you go back to the regular world, when you go back to the light world, it leaves that portal behind that you can use to go back to the Golden Land, also known as the Dark World. And it's a whole, it's a whole other world. It basically just doubled the scope of the game. In fact, more than doubled, because there's more, there's, let's say there's more stuff to do in there, in the, in the Golden Land, in the Dark World, than there is in the Light World. And yeah, we come back here with the Master Sword and uh, we can get that Aether Magic. So that'll be some other time because we don't have the Master Sword yet. But let's say uh, you want to do a little extra exploring. Let's say, you know, you don't want to bother getting the Moon Pearl or getting, you know, getting all the pendants, getting the Master Sword. But you want to you wanna see more of the Dark World. Well, there's a way you can do that. It's not... It's not an intentionally built into the game. It's a you're you you are exploiting a glitch. It's called the Death Mountain Descent, and I don't recommend it for first-time players because you're really going to mess up the plot. First step is to get into the top right corner here and use the mirror to go back to the light world. Okay, so that's done. You need to go one pixel over to the right from where you were before. Don't move. Use the mirror again right away. And now you need to pull out your sword and back into the portal that you left behind. And you should be on that ledge. And you can hop off and just walk down here. Here we are, down in the lower parts of the Golden Land, the Dark World, which you could not ordinarily get to now. And we're, but we're still a bunny, so there's all these powerful enemies, and we can't do anything about them. So I'm just going in here just to make the glitching out go away. You'll find guys like this all over the Dark World. 
Well, that's interesting. What pyramid? The Death Mountain Descent can be a lot of fun. There's ways you can stop being a bunny and do some more things. But I will warn you, though, getting upgrading your sword will advance the plot. See you next time on Link to the Past.